Okay, so uh, we, I think we can begin now. Everybody has had coffee at this point, hopefully. Uh, okay, so uh, my name is uh, Daniel Pietro Semoli. I come from uh, the Media La Prado in, in Madrid. And um, first off, I would like to uh, thank uh, the SDU and the ICTP for uh, making this uh, happen, for providing such a well-rounded uh, group of lecturers and, of course, uh, participants. And, of course, the uh, machines that are uh, part or a big part of the reason why we're here. Um, I would, I'm going to uh, make a brief introduction about uh, modeling with uh, SketchUp. SketchUp is a free uh, software um, from, from Trimble, which also has a paid version, but we're going to work with the free version. And uh, I'm going to take the liberty to talk about some uh, ground that is common to many of the modeling applications, and that is about the workflow of how we go from a 3D design to an actual physical uh, print. So uh, first, the work workflow um, is as follows. You start with a 3D design, and then you go uh, from this 3D design, whichever way you, you've, uh, you've come to it, uh, that can be uh, this uh, uh, 3D design can be uh, obtained by many different uh, ways. Uh, well, this, this is the, the first question that you get when you when you have a 3D printer. Either you buy one or you build one yourself, or a friend has one. Yes. Uh, once you have that printer, what now? You have to feed this machine some uh, data in order to produce all the models that that we see here. Uh, so most of the, or all of the models that we see here, have been obtained by any of these uh, models. Uh, what the first and most common one um, would be the, a model uh, repository. The most popular ones are, uh, of course, is uh, Thingiverse, but there are also other alternatives to Thingiverse, like uh, Pirate Bay, and of course, uh, SketchUp's own uh, 3D library, which is very, uh, very, very uh, rich. And um, so I'm going to show you some examples of that. Um, first, and uh, well, most common, as I've mentioned before, it's uh, Thingiverse. Yes? Thingiverse is. Um, it's a sort of social network uh, for, um, for designs, for designs of all kinds. Uh, the most popular ones being 3D designs and 3D designs for, for 3D printing. But you can, also you can find all sorts of uh, designs here, also two-dimensional designs to be uh, made with, for example, a laser cutter that, that can be cut. Uh, Thingiverse is a really nice, very um, <laughs> rich uh, social network of people from all uh, sorts of backgrounds that upload and of course download uh, content to it. You can have your own account and uh, for example I'm logging in with my account up here and then you can see uh, for example uh, if, I, if I choose uh, one of these uh, links for example uh, this is a very for example it's a very nice example of a customi customizable necktie we are an environment of uh, scientists and engineers, and uh, most of us don't have ties. So when we come to, a, when we're going to an event, and we of course don't do not have a tie, we can print our own tie. Uh, so it's a it's a very practical <laughs> example. Uh, here you can see who, uh, of course, the title of the of the design. And we can see how many downloads it has, how many views it has had, uh, how many likes, of course. And this, uh, this is a very, you know, very social kind of uh, place. So you can have, uh, uh, of course, the description here of, of what it is. Uh, you have, the, of course, instructions for, for printing, if there are any. Uh, of course, the tags are very important, because uh, as of now, there are probably uh, maybe uh, it's in the tens of thousands of, of designs that you can already download, maybe 30,000. Last time I checked it was around 20 something thousand, but I'm seeing here a number of 40. So this has grown. Um, warning, serious nerd street cred when wearing. I think this is very 
uh, important warning. Um, and then, of course, you can see also what well, this is a comments where you can leave comments about how you printed it or or what was necessary <laughs> uh, to get the print going. Of course, everybody uses different prints, so you know you can leave here notes about what uh, special printer you used or whatever. And here you uh, have some other uh, parts where you have uh, collections that it's part of. Of course, derivatives or remixes that people have done because uh, this most of the content that is um, uploaded here is open source. So you are free to do a lot of things with it. And here we come to <coughs> this very important part, which is the license. What type of license uh, people have used to upload this file. In this case, they're using uh, an attribution share like Creative Commons license, and anything can be, any other type of license can, can be uh, used uh, here. And of course, we can see more about this uh, author. So, anyway, Thingiverse is one of, uh, one of the uh, ways to get our designs. Uh, and then, of course, it also has something very important. Hold on one thing. Exit this and um, also this is this is a quite nice feature of, of uh, Thingiverse. You can actually uh, see this is one of the pieces of the that composes the tie. Yeah, so I can see it in three D already, so I can know how it's gonna look like. Yeah, so it's in, embedded in the in the in the website. So this is uh, done with um, HTML5. So it's all embedded there. So you can, even if you download it, if you browse it on your phone or on, on your or your tablet or your computer, you can see it here. You don't have to download any kind of uh, applications to to view it. Um, Thingiverse has also something really nice, which I think uh, uh, either Carl or Guy are going to talk about, which is uh, uh, you can actually edit some of the content that is there. Uh, provided it's in OpenSCAD format, which also we'll have a speaker that will talk about OpenSCAD later on. OpenSCAD is another type of software for, for creating 3D models using uh, scripts. And okay. Um, so anyway, going back to this, um, Thingiverse, like I said, is just one way to get our hands on some uh, designs. There's also, like I said, the Pirate Bay. Pirate Bay so, well, everybody knows here about Pirate Bay, I guess. Uh, not very user-friendly in, in uh, search-wise, but yeah, it's another way to, to get our files there. If we are concerned about the way Thingiverse handles our uh, archives, there has been some uh, concern about copyright issues and whatnot. So Pirate Bay is an alternative to that. Uh, SketchUp, like I said, I will show you later the, the 3D model gallery that they have there. It's very complete, very nice. Uh, what's there is not <coughs> made to be printed as it is in Thingiverse, but a lot of things can be printed uh, from, from that gallery. There's also, of course, uh, 3D scanning, where we have uh, professional 3D scanning uh, uh, hardware and, of course, some DIY uh, scanners. Professional uh, scanners have been uh, discussed before, some, uh, like, for example, uh, MRA or CAT scans or also laser scanners that are just made for that. Uh, then we also have some DIY 3D scanner, also using laser technologies and also using some other technologies like we're going to do uh, an example of using a, a Kinect. And of course, uh, there's always uh, 3D uh, modern software, uh, OpenSCAD, like what I mentioned before. There's a smiley on that because OpenSCAD is a very, very uh, powerful tool. And uh, one of the nice features about OpenSCAD is that it's very light. Um, so so much so that can be embedded in a in an HTML5 uh, code, and also the the um, files that you that you produce with OpenSCAD is only it's all text files, so they are very very um, light. So it's very easy to work with this type of files. Whereas when you try working with a SketchUp or AutoCAD or Blender or other types of software, the files can be a bit more uh, heavy and more bandwidth consuming, of course. And there's also, you know, some um, community projects on, or some um, community modeling that uh, that um, people have uh, gone into. I'm going to show you some examples about that. 
for example, I have some friends that have worked, let's see, uh, they're working on a, on a CNC uh, machine. So they've, they've created this, uh, <laughs> this Google group where they talk about the different uh, pros and cons of a specific uh, design. They upload their files and, uh, you know, all contribute to making this uh, happen. So there's many different ways we can go about getting our models for printing. Um, so now that uh, we have the STLs, uh, what what do we do? What do we do now? What what's uh, what happens uh, now? What's the next step? So the next step, uh, once we have our STL files, is of course to slice it. Slice it uh, means basically that this uh, these little machines over there. Uh, what they do is they construct uh, layer by layer an object and for this to happen we have to slice this object uh, slicing means exactly that to slice it and each slice of this object is then a path for that the head of the machine is going to take to draw uh, this actual two-dimensional image and then it, it, once it's done it'll go up to the next layer and it will do another two-dimensional uh, drawing with plastic and this uh, layer by layer process makes up uh, the actual three-dimensional uh, physical object that we're gonna produce. So there is different uh, software to produce this uh, slicing. We will go over many of these uh, in the next uh, couple of days, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, on that. I will show you, I do have um, a more uh, physical, sorry, a more graphical way to show this. And uh, this is, uh, for example, I'm, hold on one second. Okay, so for example, this octopus, which is very, very popular and you will see examples uh, that we have over there. Um, you can see it here. I can see, of course, a nice wireframe of what it looks like. And this is what actually happens when we're going to print. Uh, this is the first, uh, the, you can see here the layers. Let me put this a little bit bigger. And you can see that I'm at the layer one of that octopus. And then I can go up one layer. And then you can see, actually, if I zoom in, I can see the path that the machine is taking to draw this. Yes? And then as I go up, it will end up looking like that. I have my nice octopus here. So that's basically what happens uh, on, on the machines. And uh, this is, like I said, the actual path <laughs> that, the, that the machine is going to take. And um, so yeah, once I, I, I've, I'm done with the slicing, um, what I produce is a G-code, which is um, a series of instructions that basically tell the machine what, what it's going to do in a specific uh, coordinate, specific position, okay? Some of the machines that are, uh, that are here can read G-code directly, yes, and print from G-code, and some of them have to go an extra step to encapsulate this G-code and make it into another file, but that's specific to only some machines, so I won't get into detail, but um, <coughs> the nice thing about the G-code is that you can actually see it, and you can see what's, what's actually going on. I'll show you. So I'm, I'm looking at Replicator G, which is uh, it's like the mother of all the slicers. Uh, I dare say that all of the slicers that, are, that we have nowadays have been uh, based around this, uh, this software. And this, is, this software uh, <coughs> grew as the RepRap project uh, grew, and um, it's the way that the the machine, the computer talks to the printer. And we can see here an example of the G-code of the octopus that I'm showing. If I can see, make this bigger. Anyway, um, so this is a series of instructions that tell the machine what to do. 
I don't know what you probably can't see it now, but here is, for example, is the temperature that I'm printing at. Uh, the temperature of the extruder is commented here, really nice, so you can see what's what each of these instructions do. Yes, and this is the temperature of the platform, if if uh, applicable, and. Uh, at the end, these are all a series of, of pre-instructions that the machine will read before actually printing. And what it's actually going to do is this. Yes? In a X, Y, and Z position, it's going to do, like, for example, this extraction. Yeah? And then as we go, as we, as we process upwards in the, in the figure that we're printing, well, it's the, the instructions pretty much repeat. It's so basically just go here, print or not print. Yep. So that's what a G code actually looks like. It's very easy to see, very easy to comprehend for all you uh, coders and uh, people that are used to uh, programming. You can see that uh, you know it's, it's very straightforward um, uh, code. And yeah, there's also others, all, all sorts of software like I, Replicator G is the one I was showing. Uh, Cura, Repetir are also other examples of uh, free and open uh, code softwares. And there are also some uh, not open software but are also free like Netfab that lets us uh, talk to the um, to the Ultimakers, <laughs> Makerware that is only common, that, all, that can only be used to talk to uh, MakerBot. MakerWare is a, a MakerBot uh, produced language which has its own uh, slicer as well. Uh, I should say also that uh, some of these engines, um, some of these programs actually have, you, you can choose different engines for, for, for slicing depending on, on, on what suits your needs better. For example, uh, uh, MakerWare can, can call uh, onto um, SkinForge, which is the, the, the slicing engine that Replicator G uses. Uh, Cura can also use SkinForge or other uh, slicers. and. So anyway, we'll go over those in the next couple of days, so I won't spend much time on that. Um, so once I'm done with slicing, uh, I want to print, of course. Uh, I, th I think one of the nicest things about 3D printing is how uh, fast you can go from, from a, a virtual object to a physical object. And um, so this, uh, you know, this empowers, I think this empowers people a lot. You know, people that, that are not used to working with uh, or having physical stuff, uh, it's really a nice thing about 3D printing and that, you know, you can, with very little knowledge, you can produce your own models and uh, physical models, okay? So anyway, once I'm done with slicing, what's the next step before printing? Well, we have to choose the material. It's funny, this presentation I've done before and maybe one year ago uh, the list was around two or three materials. Now it just keeps on growing every time we, we talk about this. Uh, right now, uh, right here at the lab, we can print with PLA, which is a bioplastic. It's uh, biodegradable. comes from cornstarch or uh, other sorts of uh, starches, uh, depending on the manufacturer, of course. ABS, which is the most common plastic of, for uh, housings, uh, which is the plastic of, of, of Legos. Then it's PVA, which uh, is a um, water-soluble material that is uh, commonly used for support structure or scaffolding structures. There's also polycarbonate, which is quite new for, th for 3D printing. And there's polyurethane. So there's also uh, there's also some some mixes between, for example, PLA and, and sawdust that is called laywood. So there's many different things. We, we do have some uh, a lot of examples back here, so we can, uh, if anybody wants to see an example, we can show them later. So anyway, once I'm, I choose my material, then there's some couple of things that we need to take into consideration. Of course, leveling the build plate is common for all of these machines. Every uh, uh, computer um, numeric control machine in like, in like, like these machines f of course has to go through a, a calibration process uh, so leveling the build plate is one of these uh, parts of the calibration uh, hot cold calibration also um, it's also depending on the type of um, material that you're going to use uh, I, I make a difference because in the same machine if you're using the hotbed uh, or not, the calibration, is, of course, is going to um, be different 
because when you heat the machine, the uh, platform changes dimensions. So you have to take that into consideration. And of course, uh, the temperature to what you're going to extrude. Uh, PLA, ABS, PVA, all of these uh, materials will function at a different uh, temperature and within the same uh, material, depending on the manufacturer and even the color of the material, this temperature also uh, will change. Yes? So, uh, also, oops, sorry about that. Also, some considerations about uh, once we start modeling, some considerations have also to be uh, ha have to be taken into. Uh, it's basically just these three things. Um, you do want to have a flat surface, which your uh, mm, sorry, which your object will rest on. All of these pieces have some flat surface, even though it doesn't look like like this uh, structure here. Uh, even though it's very little, the flat surface, these three points is what where the, the piece actually rests on. We cannot have objects in, in floating or in mid-air uh, for printing. Uh, overhangs are also uh, a key thing that we, that we also have to consider. These printers uh, cannot print overhangs uh, or have trouble printing overhangs of more than 45 uh, degrees. And of course, the objects have to be watertight. They cannot have any holes because they will otherwise will give a, an error when 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 slicing. Uh, for overhangs, to I'll have a couple of of uh, things that I can show you for overhangs. These are this is um, a nice um, a nice example, nice piece to to test the overhangs of your machine. We can see here different degrees of overhangs, yes, from 70 degrees to 20 degrees. And you can see here what, what I mean by overhangs is how steep this angle is uh, uh, regarding the horizontal plane. And uh, you can see an example here. This is a printed example. You can see that whenever I, when, as I go, higher and higher, these overhangs are start to look a little bit uh, not so nice. And let's see. This is also an example of, of, uh, of overhangs. You can see here how as I go up, the overhangs are, you know, this looks nice, but then as I go here, it looks a little bit like the, the uh, you know, the gravity pulls down on the, on the filament, so it doesn't look as nice. There are some ways around <laughs> this, of course. You can, uh, you can apply support or scaffolding uh, structures to it, so you can print an, um, more uh, intricate designs using uh, support material, but of course, removing this material it's, um, it's a bit tricky sometimes. If, uh, if we're not using water soluble material, we'll have to remove it by hand. And the pieces end up looking with a little bit of, <coughs> of uh, rests of the, of the support uh, material. Well, you can see here how that, that structure looks like. And um, yeah, a couple of examples here. You can see, for example, this is, uh, this is a piece uh, printed uh, object that uh, the original model is uh, it's uh, a sculpture in the metro uh, metropolitan sorry in the MoMA in New York I won't say that <laughs> and this is used this uh, has been produced using a professional uh, laser scanner and then I'm going to show you an example of well, this is a 10,000 uh, euro scanner but then you can see another angle here, and actually we have that uh, we have that piece somewhere around there, and this is printed with one of these machines, and, and this shows a nice um, application of of laser scanners, uh, laser scanners in this uh, in this type of applications can be used to scan uh, on a sculpture that is in a in a museum. In this case, like I said, it was the MoMA in New York. And 
then you can have a replica of this uh, sculpture and you know people that cannot actually physically go to this museum can actually have this uh, piece in their own hand if they have a, a, a 3D printer uh, nearby. And here uh, is an example of a, well, this you can see a big difference between uh, these are pieces uh, printed also with these machines, but they have been produced using a, a, a Kinect uh, um, controller. And of course, this is a hundred dollar piece of hardware. So the difference is, uh, is, is, is big, but you know, for, for as a proof of concept is, is, is okay. So also a nice uh, picture here of a back-to-back -back, uh, scanning. And uh, some uh, tools that can help you or that can help us uh, on the process of you know, getting our, our 3D models. Uh, SketchUp, I'm going to do a, an example, a quick example later on. Uh, it's, it's a nice tool for, for, of course, 3D design. It also allows us to import uh, existing STL uh, models and, of course, <laughs> our, our main interest exporting these files into an STL format for preparing and then uh, printing. Uh, Pleasant 3D is a really nice uh, piece of software that I show you, the one, uh, the, the octopus I showed you on the, on the, on the pl using Pleasant. It's nice for uh, basic editing, also checking the size of, of the structures. Uh, it also can be uh, used as an STL viewer and also a G-code viewer. You can see the G-code layer by layer, how it's, how it's looking. Replicator G I also showed before. It's uh, one, uh, one of the things that I like the most about uh, Replicator G is the fact that it has a control panel that you can c manually control the, the machine uh, to, make, to move the axis, to extrude or not extrude. Also, that's uh, very helpful when, when, you're, when you have a plastic jam on your, on your extruder. You, you do need a, a, some sort of manual control to get around this. Also, Replicator G allows us to uh, view STLs to do some basic editing in, in uh, position and, and, and size. Also a G-code editor and viewer. I showed you before the way the G-code looked, but you can actually go and edit that G-code yourself if you need to, and, and of course if you understand what, what's going on in, in those uh, lines of code. And of, of course um, an X3G or S3G generator that we need for using at least MakerBot machines. Uh, MakerWare is also a very useful uh, piece of software for uh, viewing STLs. It allows some basic editing, like I said before. More than, more than Replicator G, allows us to do some uh, resizing uh, without the constraints of, of, of doing um, uniform scaling. You can, you can scale in all three different uh, axes independently. It allows us also to, to do some basic uh, mashups so we can uh, combine STLs together and, and print. That's experimental, but you can do that kind of things. And it also allows us to do X3G and S3G uh, generations and, of course, do arrays of, of, of prints. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and, and do a very uh, quick demo of of SketchUp, okay. So this is my basic layout of the fun SketchUp um, work area. Yes, what, one of the first things you need to do when you work with SketchUp is to choose the right um, uh, well, sorry the right um, units to work on. Yes, so you can, you can do that in the templates area. I'm not going to show you th that right now. But that's, a, that's key to work with all different ki kinds of modeling software is to write, uh, work with the right units. When you are going to print, you need to v be very careful about this because the, the, the print area of the machines is, you know, is finite. So you have to, I mean, if you're, if you're not going to print something, it doesn't matter if it's in feet or, or meters or kilometers or whatever. You know, it, because you're not going to print. But if you're going to print, it's very important that you have your units right. So you have to check that you're working with millimeters uh, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to show you this uh, nice thing about SketchUp is you can get the hang of it very quickly. Uh, I'm going to show you how you know you can make a, a volume 
you can just you know make uh, on a square. I can choose the units that I uh, sorry the the exact measurements of, of what I'm working on right here in the lower right hand corner. I can see the units, uh, the measurements sorry of, of and also the units of, of the piece that I have. Uh, but I can choose this manually, so I can input like for example on a 100 by 50 millimeter um, rectangle. And then if I want to make, uh, you know, I want to extrude it upwards, I just choose the pull tool, yeah? And I just pull up, oops, sorry. I just pull up as high as I want to go, for example, of, you know, 45 millimeters. And then I want to make, uh, for example, I want to make a house here, and uh, choose here and here. And, well, see, it's a typical example of a mistake that we do when working with SketchUp is not knowing where the plane that you're working on is. And for that, it's uh, good to see how you can, you have three axes here, blue, red, and green. So if I'm going to work on the blue axis, try to have it in front of me. So I can see that the line is blue because it's in the blue axis. So I can go here, and then I'm on the green axis, and I'm gonna try and meet that line over there. And uh, this will meet here. Yes, and then I have the yeah, and, uh, just a basic shape. Well, they always put a person there, so you can see the scale of what you're doing, and you can sort of check if your <coughs> units are correct. But anyway, I'm gonna make um, I'm gonna make a keychain, which is something that is quite easy to make, and it's really nice because you can also. The nice thing about these uh, machines is that you can have uh, personal, personalized uh, things. So I'm gonna make a personalized keychain. And uh, sorry, I'm gonna go fast because uh, we are running short on time. But I'm gonna do uh, basically here. I'm going to do use a tool for that is very nice of SketchUp, which is 3D text. Yes, and I'm gonna go for example here ICTP. Uh, DIY, 3D printing, just because we love acronyms. And um, here you can see that the size of the font that I have is 254 <coughs> millimeters, which is quite high. So I'm going to open up the font um, window and I'm going to choose the actual size, which 50 is about, about right. And then I'm going to choose my... Um, my font. <laughs> of course, I have to choose a font that can be uh, printed, nothing too fancy. This is okay. So, and then I can choose here how much is extruded upwards. Yes, three millimeters is all right for a keychain. It's so maybe a little too much. But anyway, I'm gonna place it here. Of course, I'm way out of scale, so I will just choose here. If you go here and then just do S for scale, you can do a, a scaling of the of the piece. And then if I go on the upper, uh, one of the corners, I can use um, uniform scaling. Yeah. And uh, okay, so my 3D text is okay. So now I'm gonna give some shape to my keychain. Um, first I'm going to extrude it a little bit so it has some volume. Two millimeters is okay. And then I'm gonna do the push and pull thing. I'm gonna choose one of the sides to make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna place the text so I know what uh, what it looks like. This is more or less alright. I'm going to constrain it to make it look nicer so it looks more like a keychain and not like a uh, you know like a sign. And of course, uh, time is of the essence when you talk about 3D printing. So whatever is not necessary to print, you don't print. So I'm gonna make it nice. And, um, and constrained. I can make, of course, the corners a bit round and make it a little bit nicer, but you know, we don't have much time, but you can imagine how that looks like. I will, however, make a little hole here on the corner so I can attach my, my uh, keys. Uh, the radius of the hole can be 1.5, big enough. Uh, I'm gonna make it, move it a little bit, to oh, sorry, towards the corner. And uh, yeah, more or less here. 
Come on. Okay, here. And now make it all the way to here. And there we go. I have a hole for that. And you can see that in a couple of minutes, I have made my uh, keychain for this uh, nice workshop. Right now, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to make. Sorry, one question. Between, yep. Uh, sure. The border around the hole which you just created is now probably half a millimeter. Is this another problem in printing? It's. It's not what. Oh yeah. This. You're right. Uh, I'm gonna check on that and see how much is actually from here to here. It's 0 0.8 millimeters. So you're right. I'm going to leave it the way it was. The nice thing about these machines is that they let you prototype. So uh, even if I hadn't uh, taken that into consideration, uh, let's see how much I got, 1.3. I can go ahead and pull it a little bit farther down. And uh, now I'm more, uh, things that if I printed that probably you would, uh, you could lose your keys, I mean, you could lose your keychain because that could break on that piece. So two, two millimeters. And like I was saying, the nice thing about this, um, uh, about rapid prototyping is that even if you get it wrong, you know, getting it wrong is part of the experience. You can just print it again until you get it right. It's very cheap, very fast. And okay, so now we have secured our keychain, won't break. I'm gonna make, sorry about that. I'm going to make a hole. I'm gonna make a group of this, yes? And then I'm going to export it to an STL. Um, SketchUp doesn't let you do exporting or importing of, of STLs uh, natively. You have to uh, use an external plugin. It's very easy to find it. It'll show, you up, show up at the first, uh, the first hit in a, in a Google search. So where am I? Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, thank you. Okay, so I will export uh, the 3D model. Oh, sorry, export STL. Thank you, Carlo. I will export the STL. Again, I'm going to check my measurements, millimeters. Okay, so this is good. I'll choose an STL, which is what I'm going to fit the, the, the software and eventually the machine. And okay, so I'm going to do a keychain and put it on my desktop and save it. And now I have uh, something here, let's see. Okay, and I only have the text, so something didn't work right. Let's hope that did it. No. Okay. So there's some. Probably uh, double surfaces. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow we will yeah. discuss about all those problems. There are multiple surfaces. It's not one unique value with an outer surface, but uh, between the letters and the base, there is one internal surface that we will probably uh, send the uh, viewer and troubles. But yeah, double double surfaces. Double surfaces are not liked by any of these uh, programs, so you have to use. Uh, in this case, I can I can just edit it from the from the original file, but then if if we had this uh, file <coughs> already uh, already um, made and already downloaded, we could go to another software like uh, Netfab and check on this, check the the um, integrity of the piece, make sure it's not doesn't have any holes. And also, just before uh, I finish, I also wanted to show you the gallery, the 3D warehouse, it's called in, in SketchUp. And you can get uh, different models here. And it's quite nice because, uh, let's see if there's something from Trieste here. We can, f we can see here different uh, buildings and ships. And uh, we could choose, of course, we do have to look, um, we ha do have to look 
well into the library to see what's <laughs> what's printable and what's not printable and you can choose like uh, buildings of, of Trieste or, or any other city that have been uploaded to, to uh, this gallery and of course this gallery is you know growing by the minute so there's always something uh, nice to find and uh, with that I'm done I, if anybody has any other uh, questions we can talk about this later on the goal is for you to have a little bit of an idea so you can produce your own uh, model and maybe by the end of the of the workshop we can print something that you have designed using SketchUp or any other software, modeling software that we'll cover in the next few days. Thank you. Thank you.